Yes, of course, signing a new deal with Kylian Mbappe was integral. Losing him would have been quite the hit to PSG's project, and if a young player like him doesn't want to be at PSG, then that says a lot about their project. Massive signing, no doubt, but coming with Mbappe is the signing of Luis Campos as a strategic advisor, as he and his staff will inform PSG on who to pursue in the transfer market in order to have a more holistic approach to their squad building, instead of just buying on names alone. And Campos, his track record for signing great talent at a low, low cost, as well as crafting together title-winning squads on shoestring budgets, absolutely speaks for itself. So when you take someone like him, who's used to dealing with a measly budget, and pair him with a club where money is no object, what do you get? No, seriously, what do you get? Hey, I'm Adrian, and thanks for stopping by my channel. I'm excited to talk about Luis Campos with you guys today. He's sort of a hipster's pick when it comes to scouting and squad building. Or at least he was. I'm not sure what the PSG job will do to affect his reputation amongst football hipsters. And hey, just because I have glasses doesn't mean I'm a football hipster, man. Glasses do not equal hipster, fellas. It's 2022, get with the times. But if you pair that with my mustache, uh-oh. Anyways, let's talk about Luis Campos, his failures as a manager, and his great, great, great successes in other roles, as well as how this is a massive change at PSG and a very refreshing one. Luis Campos is from Faun, Portugal, which is about a 40 minute drive from the northern border with Spain. And the man has far too many names. What the hell? Luis Felipe Hippolito Reis Pedrosa Campos? I mean, come on, bro. Luis Felipe Campos is more than enough. But hey, as a son of Portuguese immigrants, I am well aware that the Portuguese love to overdo it when it comes to names. Anyway. The man always loved football. He played himself but never went pro, and in university he studied physical education and eventually nabbed a job at SC Espino, then a Primera Liga club where he worked as a fitness coach. Same kind of path as Mourinho actually. If you watched our video on Mourinho, some of his best grudge matches with other managers, you'll know that he also studied physical education and then went on to be a fitness coach before becoming a full-fledged manager eventually. Luis Campos managed for quite a few years, bouncing around Portugal and ultimately gaining the unwanted reputation for being the manager that gets clubs relegated, even if his team's brand of football was considered attractive, considered kind of sexy. In fact, after helping not one, but two clubs get relegated in the 0203 campaign, he followed that up with Beramar two years later for the great hat trick of relegations, and the Portuguese media started referring to the guy as Luis Campos instead. <laughs> Campos means grave in Portugal. He was the death of clubs, or at least the death of their top flight ambitions. That said, it seems that Campos has always been very interested in the more analytical side of football, which explains why he pivoted nicely into a career as a scout, both in scouting opponents and scouting talent, where he made his mark. In fact, yes, when we're talking about Portuguese scouts and talent, of course, the octopus of football that is Jorge Mendes and Luis Campos have rubbed shoulders as Campos scouted for Porto and Mendes for a while. But he made it back into football via Real Madrid, as his old colleague Mourinho requested he join him at Real in 2012, where he would scout opposition for Mourinho and identify talent as well. One such talent that was identified was Fabinho, who went from Portuguese club Rio Ave to Real Madrid and back again. But with Mourinho leaving Real, Campos left a year later for a much more high profile job. High profile just in his role, not as far as clubs go. And guess what? Fabinho came with him. God, this guy was obsessed with Fabinho, huh? AS Monaco was yet another club owned by a Russian billionaire, an owner that had more money than he knew what to do with. I mean, seriously. In football terms, just throwing money at the squad without any sort of cohesive approach to things, lacking in direction when it came to actually assembling a successful squad. In steps Luis Campos as the sports coordinator at the club, tasked with building a team that could challenge with the best of them in France. PSG was just beginning their hegemony at this time. What a cute era, eh? Just becoming a giant. In joining Monaco, he looked to move the team away from paying exorbitant fees for talents that were already established, your Falcaos, your Moutinhos, and instead look at hidden gems across Europe, and oftentimes within their own league, that could contribute to the team on the pitch while later growing in value to sell at a massive profit for the club. That last part, however, will always come with territory of success, and it was success that Monaco were after, and success they secured. 
Campos had a growing database of players as he dove into the underlying numbers for prospective talents while standing by that the best way to get to know a player is to see them play in person. He took from Portugal and signing Bernardo Silva for just under 16 million euros and Fabinho, who was back at Rio Ave for about 6 million euros. Then he took from the rest of France. Bakayoko signed for 8 million from Rennes. That left back who shall not be named signed from Marseille for 13 million. And of course, perhaps his biggest coup Thomas Lamar for just 4 million euros from Cannes. As you'll remember, this Monaco side made a deep run in the Champions League, losing out in the semi-finals against Juventus. And of course, they knocked PSG off of the top spot. The only team to do so since PSG had started collecting Ligue 1 trophies back in 2012. Sort of like how Wolves have been collecting Portuguese players in the last few years. They just do it for fun. And of course, Campos built up a relationship with Mbappe and his family who act as his representatives while he was at Monaco. That's important to remember, this Campos Mbappe connection. The players who Campos brought in for so cheap were sold at massive profit. Of course, winning things is cooler than looking at how well you have developed and sold talent for. I mean, I say this as a Benfica supporter who recently has been having to celebrate the latter over the former, given how things have been going. <laughs> but it is remarkable. Fabinho was sent to Liverpool for around 45 million euros, 39 million euro profit. Bernardo sold to City for 50 million euros. Bakayoko around 40 million to Chelsea. That left back for almost 60 million to City. Not only did they profit, but they profited on the pitch. And things haven't gone as smoothly since Campos left the club in 2016. Yes, he left before they won the league, but he had put all the pieces in place. From there, he actually stayed in France, joining Lille and producing the exact same magic trick, but with far more difficult circumstances. Or as Campos put it, he produced another masterpiece, which he said he would do. Those difficult circumstances being bring in a bunch of talent to the club that was hurting financially and build a competitive side. And he used just 8.9 million euros, for example, to bring in the players like, you know, Joseph Font for free, Zeki Selic for 2.5 million, Raphael Leong for free, Jonathan Bamba for free, Ikone for 5 million euros. I mean, great signings. After three and a half years, Campos left Lille in 2020, one year prior to Lille winning the Ligue 1. Again, he left a year before they win, but again, he had put all the pieces in place for them to be successful. And they were the second team to unseat PSG from the top since the Qatari sports investment takeover. When Campos arrived, they had previously finished just one point above the relegation playoffs. They managed to get all the way up to second thanks to his signings and the guidance of Christophe Galtier. As the saying goes, if you can't beat them every year, then sign them. And that's what PSG did. Luis Campos was announced as the strategic advisor to PSG this past week, something that had been mused for weeks and something that could well have come as a direct request from Kylian Mbappe, as again, he and his family were very close to Campos at one time, and clearly he has seen value with how Campos operates, his recruitment, and how he builds squads. PSG would be stupid not to notice as well. Clearly, they too have noticed how on two occasions, despite spending far, 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 far less than PSG, teams that Campos has guided through the transfer market have unseated them on two separate occasions. Clearly, PSG's approach to how they have crafted their squad isn't sustainable and isn't bringing them the result they really want to win the Champions League. But one thing is for sure, the appointment of Campos will shake up their recruitment strategy going forward. You can bet that he will no longer see the, you know, buying on a name basis approach from PSG's past that saw the likes of an aging and injury riddled Sergio Ramos arrive with Vinaldum, an expensive but brilliant Hakimi, an old but obviously still brilliant Messi, etc. Good players, but short-term solutions. Instead of almost exclusively bringing in established stars, PSG will look to bring in players that they can turn into stars. Players that will feel more of an affinity toward the club for giving them a chance, as opposed to players who have won elsewhere and are just congregating at PSG without any real direction, hoping to pick up another trophy or two. What I will be interested in is one, will PSG really drastically change their approach and not sign these glamour signings from the past? And two, with coaches past, they have had the option to use the younger players, but often decided against it, whether that's due to feeling as if they can't risk it because of the pressure they will be under if it goes wrong, or whether they're instructed to play their more famous players more often is not well known. But if this change in approach will see PSG listen to Luis Campos and his team of expert scouts and analysts recommendations when it comes to constructing a squad, then this could be a masterstroke from the Qatari owners. I mean, 
Campus's track record speaks for itself, not only in acquiring elite talent for cheap, but in building great teams that are capable of winning the league for cheap. Not that PSG care about the price, more the building of the squad, building for longevity within the squad. And with rumors of Campos being reunited with Gauthier again at PSG, the man who of course guided Lille to the Ligue 1 title last year with the squad that Campos built, PSG is certainly looking like an interesting proposition with the shift in how they do things. You bring in the kingmaker to the club that's already the king of France, and how far can he take them at a continental level? What do you think? Is this PSG making a genuine change that will shake things up at the club for the better, or will it not make a difference for them? Let me know. For me, this is one of the best moves they have made in a while, as Leonardo just, I mean, his poor track record speaks for itself at this point, I hate to say. Regardless, I'm Adrian, I appreciate you watching this video. If you're new around here, I mean, why not subscribe? But beyond that, thanks for watching once again, and take care.